Like many of us current film shooters, my photography career started digitally. The first real photo camera that I had was a Canon Rebel XSI that was given to me as a gift. Digital served me well for many years, but eventually it became uninspiring for me to shoot. When my love for photography waned, it was film that reignited it. I loved the slow, intentional, tactile process of shooting it, how it challenged you to get everything right in camera instead of fixing it in post, and I loved the magical analog aesthetic from the images I created. I fell head over heels for this medium and have been a die-hard film shooter for years now. I had forgotten all about digital and hadn't looked back until just recently when something made me reconsider. So like many of you, I'm sure, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker, which means, you know, we often have to carry two cameras places, photo camera, video camera. Now this is fine when you're walking on flat ground, but when the adventure calls for something more vertically challenging or demands that you carry your shelter and multiple days of provisions on your back, then this can become quite a burden. For example, just a few months ago, I trekked to the top of South Sister, one of the tallest mountains here in Oregon. 5,000 feet of elevation gain over five miles of steep, loose, rocky scree. To document this adventure, I decided to bring my Sony a7S III, a very capable video camera, but an okay photo camera, and then I brought my Mamiya 7 II, my favorite medium format film camera. When you combine the weight of these two camera bodies, lenses, the accessories, the batteries, the microphone, all the stuff, these two systems accounted for 12 pounds of the 30 pound pack I carried up that mountain. Now, I don't regret my decision whatsoever. It allowed me to capture the things that I want to make, like the things I'm showing you right now, but it did highlight a growing need of mine, a need for a camera that could do both so that I didn't have to bring two. Enter the Fuji X-T5. The X-T5 is Fujifilm's latest vintage-styled APS-C mirrorless camera. As I'm sure you're already aware, Fujifilm, though they make digital cameras now, started out as a film company. From 1934 to 2000, film was their bread and butter. And though they may have changed with the times, they haven't forgotten their analog heritage. You can see it in the vintage styling of their cameras and in the film simulations, which promises to be an alternative to the raw, centered workflows of most digital cameras. Now with just shy of 90 years of experience in the film industry, Fujifilm has a wealth of information when it comes to film chemistry and color science, making them uniquely qualified to pull something like this off, right? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. This brings us to my birthday backpacking trip in Northern Washington. Everything's on my back, so this is the perfect opportunity to test and see if I could get away with just one camera. So I brought the Fujifilm X-T5 with me, and I left all of my other cameras at home save for an analog point and shoot. So on paper, the X-T5 is a capable video camera. Just like my a7S III, it's capable of shooting 422 10-bit color. Now I'd seen some pretty great images, or sorry, I should say video clips come out of this camera, but it's always different shooting it yourself because people, they don't really wanna post the bad shots that they got. So you usually end up with kind of a skewed perspective on what the camera is actually capable of. We're not gonna be doing that in this video. My goal here is not to show you how skilled or fantastic I am with a camera, but just to show you what I was able to get out of this. So all of this footage you see was shot in Fuji F-Log2 and transformed to Rec. 709 using Fuji's own transform LUT. Uh, no other corrections have been made. It was also shot without a neutral density filter as part of the experiment. So the motion probably looks a little, a little bit more blocky and video-y in bright scenes. Now, while shooting, the footage looked fine on the camera's LCD, but once I got back to the computer, I could see some issues. For starters, there seems to be a lot of noise, particularly in the shadows, even in shots that are properly exposed. Something that I noticed that could definitely have been a factor is the video bitrate. So I shot all these clips at 4K long GOP 422 at 100 megabits per second. 100 megabits per second is typically what I shoot for my 24 frame per second footage on my A7S III. But something that the Sony does that the X-T5 does not do is when I increase my frame rate, the camera will increase the bitrate to compensate for the additional frames. You can tell that the X-T5 did not do this because the 24 frame per second clips look way better than the 60 frame per second clips. I also confirmed this in the menu and it appears that no, the Fuji does not compensate for the frame rate and adjust the bitrate accordingly. 
This is of course something I didn't realize until it was already too late. I captured all of these clips. So now I'm shooting everything at 300 megabits per second in the all intra codec. Basically what I'm saying is that the video results were somewhat underwhelming, likely in part due to user error and will require some more experimentation. If you saw my last video in Washington where I took this trip, all of that footage from the trip is shot on the X-T5 the way that I just previously described. So if you want to see what I was able to do with the colors and the quality given the issues I was working through, then you can go hop over and check out that video after this one. But what about the photos? Remember that I was evaluating the photos based entirely on the film simulations and recipes. I wanted to see if I could get something straight out of camera that I would be stoked on. Something that would require minimal or no editing in post. So I shot these images with the Portra 400 recipe and the Emulsion 86 recipe from Fuji X Weekly. Some of the images turned out quite nice, but it definitely doesn't look like film. It definitely still feels digital, especially when looking at the photos shot in the middle of the day. The way they resolve just doesn't feel very organic to me. It feels very clinical. And then images that have more dark tones have this really revealing ugly brown digital noise, at least in the Emulsion 86 images. So the film simulations definitely aren't film, definitely still feel pretty digital to me. I will say that there were some instances where the film simulations actually did a pretty decent job. I would say that the Portra 400 recipe was more consistently on target than the other ones that I tried. This is probably because it's more of a mild recipe, um, but I'm not sure how I feel about this whole looks good on the back of the camera, doesn't look good when you get it back onto the computer thing, and I know that my monitors are calibrated correctly. Uh, now I can already hear the comments. If you want your images to look like film, wow, you just shoot film. I do shoot film. I shoot a lot of film and I'm going to continue to shoot film. What I wanted to see was, you know, for this perhaps unique use case, when I can only bring one camera, is there one I can bring that on the video side shoots quality on par with what I'm used to and for photos, captures things in a way that I enjoy that doesn't require a whole lot of post-production. The answer is still developing. It is yes and no. The video side of things, I feel that the camera is capable of giving me results that I want, but I haven't been able to get it to yet, and that's probably my fault. So TBD on that one. For the photos, at least for the film simulations, I just don't see a place for them for me. They're just not really up to par as far as I'm concerned. They're neat, they're convenient, but I'm going to be needing to do some more intensive post-processing to get images that I want out of this camera. I will say I have done some messing around with the RAW files and they do seem incredibly flexible and robust. So that's good. So I'm going to continue to experiment with things like filters, adapting vintage lenses, and experiment with the file structure of things, see if this can fit into my workflow or not. But for me, film still remains undefeated. Thanks for watching. See you next time.